Ben Smithard, I mean, what an achievement you've done with uh, cinematography on Downton Abbey, the movie. And my first question has to be just sort of how you came to this project, given that you hadn't worked on the television series, and how wary of it were you accepting it, given the success of the TV series? Well, I knew the producers, so um, that made it easier. And I knew, and I was very good friends with Donal Woods, who's a production designer. Um, so we, I, I just spoke to Donal uh, at a great length about the, the film, and, and also Donal men, had mentioned the film maybe six months to a year before. So um, because I worked with Donal on so many different films before, we did Henry the Fourth together, and The Dresser, and and Cranford, and My Room with Marilyn. So I, I really, and Donal was a key part of Downton Abbey because he did all the design on all the on all the series. So. I went along to a meeting thinking, well, you know what, this is this could be really good because I I didn't do the TV series, so, so there's a lot of work that's been done for me in, in a sense. Um, so I, I, when I got the movie, I was ecstatic. And then the but it's this balancing act because you want to be sort of loyal to the series, and you know the most of the people seeing it in the cinema are going to have been fans of the show, but you want to give them a cinematic experience. So how how did you juggle those different sort of requirements? Because I think it, it it's it's done so well. I mean, you really opened up the the show, and it it it, it feels like a film. It's not sometimes you'll see TV shows that are have a feature film to them, and it could just be another TV episode and with this one i didn't feel like this was something this wasn't episode 63. uh yes i understand the, the question very well because uh, it started off by having a very good brief from the producers from gareth neem and 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 liz truebridge um who gave me a brief to make a film as, as big as and as epic as i possibly could obviously whilst keeping in 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 check i that the audience wouldn't accept it if it would, if it went too strange. But um, I think everything I was trying to do from the word go, from either choosing the camera or deciding about how I was going to light it or how I was going to shoot it, I was thinking uh, of 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 cinema. I wasn't thinking of television at all. Obviously, we had a little bit, we had a longer schedule, so we had more time to do it than the TV, uh, any TV schedule, but. Uh, every single, trust me, every single minute of the film, I was thinking about how to make it look and feel much bigger. So, the camera system that I chose was was a much more advanced, a much a kind of bigger, more epic type type of camera system, and and every my my decision making process was based on on the theories that I have on when I whenever I shoot on any shoot for any feature film really. So, I just you know. When I'm looking through the camera, I'm just thinking that all I'm seeing is this image blown up on a very big screen. So there are times when you have to be very simple with it. You know, if you've got a scene with Maggie Smith and and Michelle Dockery, and it's just a two hander, then there's not a huge amount you can do. But 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 there are subtle differences between te television and cinema that I was very aware of, and and I just had a, I had total backup from the producers and the director and everybody and the whole cast so i was in in a sense i was in the best position because i was allowed to produce the images that i thought were right uh, to, to make it feel quite epic mm -hmm. so when you you bring up that scene one of the last scenes in the film and it's a very intimate scene and that was shot i know at harwood house and you had to deal with a lot of constraints, though, in in versus being on a soundstage, like in terms of just the lighting and shooting of that scene. I'd love to learn a little bit more about that. Well, you're right because obviously, in in a place like Harwood, and the same with uh, same with High Clear Castle, is that you know, everything's so expensive. I mean, Harwood's even more expensive than High Clear, if you can possibly imagine. That. Some of the paintings are worth millions of pounds. And the tapestries and the wallpaper and the furnishings, you really, at Harwood, you really can't go anywhere near anything. But you know what? I'm used to that. I'm used to shooting in very, very expensive stately homes and castles. And, and to be honest, I mean, it makes it really difficult for the light. It really does because you can't hang anything off the, off the ceiling. You can't, you can't literally cannot touch anything. You've got people 
walking around with you from the estate, making sure that you don't touch anything, make sure, and it, even the actors are wary of it, to be honest. So it really, it, the hardest thing is, is, is the lighting because you, 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 because you can't change anything. You, sometimes you can't even, if there's a light there and Donald said, yes, it's okay because it's a period light. So you use it, but you can't move it. You can't change it. You could probably let them change, let them change, allow you to change the bulb, but that's about it. So in that particular room where we were shooting that scene with, with Maggie and Michelle, there was only one place to put the, the light really, because I couldn't, you know, the, 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 the main wide master shot that I set up was pretty wide. So you kind of saw the whole room, there's mirrors everywhere as well. So there's only one place to do it. So it's tricky, but to be honest, Paul, I'm, I'm used to, I'm used to those constraints shooting the kind of features that I do. So, um, I mean, if you're in a studio, you have the similar constraints because you've got to be respectful of the, 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 the decoration, the design is put in there. But obviously there's lots of different ways. You know, I cut out the ceiling so you don't, so I can hang lights from the ceiling and I can do a lot more in a studio than I can do in a location. But uh, I, I just pulled. So, yeah, but you mentioned the camera system you chose. So, what was that that you chose to use for the? It was a Tony Venice. It was a new camera system that had come out maybe three months before. And, um, I, and I, we tested it extensively and, and I knew it would be a, a bit of a game changer camera. It's a, it's a new system and, and it works really well. So, when you went to High Clear, having, they'd shot, you know, dozens of episodes of the TV series there. Did, what was the difference that that camera system entailed in terms of the lighting? And and uh, was there something extra you had to do? Not really. No. I mean, the cam at, at the end of the day, the camera is just a tool. It doesn't it doesn't really help you that much. It's just a slightly better tool than the last one that 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 that, 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 that uh, the TV series would have used. I think we've lost uh, Ben here. Hmm. Ah, here you are again. I knew I thought it was. Okay. If I'm patient, you'd return. Um, okay. So you, you were saying that the, the the system didn't require a different kind of lighting, but when okay. you didn't use it, say in um, in Lake Hog for that wonderful sequence, the uh, the, the parade with the king and yeah. uh, just the, the staging of that, because that again, that's where it sort of turned from TV series into film. The the chase scene um, yeah. that. There was a certain grandeur to that. What, how um, bringing them on location? How much pressure do you feel in in an instance like that, where you've got so many of the cast there and hundreds of extras? It, yeah, it's it's a big scene. It really is. And to have a hundred horses and a hundred soldiers on those horses and and three or four hundred extras and four cameras, <laughs> and, and and also we're in a a very again, even though it's an exterior location, it's a very it's a national trust property that all those houses are owned by real people, um, but it's owned by a trust. So you have to get all their permissions and you have to, and you have to be very respectful of the location. We closed all the roads down. It was, you know, there was masses and masses of all these horses had to be fed and watered every day. And it was a four day shoot. So they were, so everybody had to be, it was like this small army. Um, and, and, and obviously there was a lot of money being spent on that, and 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 there was no visual effects to not really. I mean, there was a little, little bit of crowd replication, but everything, like a lot of this film, Paul, everything's really in camera. It's 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 kind of old school filmmaking. If you don't get it, especially with those big scenes, if you don't manage to get it in the the, the schedule that you've been allocated, you're in big trouble because it's so expensive you couldn't go back there and do it again we were lucky with the weather we had three days of sun so that made a huge difference um but it's very it's very those scenes are very big and i needed to and i and i relish shooting big scenes because most of the time the big the bigger scenes are not easy but if you're you, you 
they're always well planned out from the production to the design department to my department to everything that I do. So it's, uh, I, I love the, I really do love the, um, the grandeur of those scenes because that's what cinema is. When I was, you know, when I was growing up watching David Lean movies, that's what I wanted to recreate. I wanted to recreate something on that scale and, and have it. And also, as, as I say, everything, I shoot every image myself. I'm, I, I'm behind the camera on all the shots and I don't have second units. There was no second units there. There was no action units. It was just us making that, those big scenes. So, and I'm just trying to, I'm just trying to make, put as much money on the screen as possible. And the production will worry quite rightly because lots of things could have gone wrong I and mean, lots of things could have gone wrong, but nothing went wrong. It's just so well planned out. Yeah. Well, one of the, uh, I think the one time you weren't behind the camera would have been those drone shots that are so wonderful. Yeah. They really, yeah. you see the grounds, you see the grandeur of High Clear or Downton Abbey in a way you've never seen before. Shooting on the grounds, though, you mentioned um, sunlight. So the weather cooperated because there's some wonderful moments on the grounds. Uh, Lady Edith and her husband, um, Branson and the princess. Um, how cooperative was the weather on those days? Well, we, there's, there's quite a few aspects in this, Paul. Um, one of them is we were shooting in the autumn in this country, so September, October, and a bit of November. Uh, and I think that's the best three, two, three months of the year to shoot in this country. I've shot a couple of other movies at the same time. And it's the best, I think it's the best few months to shoot here. The sunlight's a bit low. It's, it's a, it's a bit more interesting. Um, but every, again, everything was planned out. It had to be because, because, uh, sometimes you needed to, if something, the weather wasn't that great, you'd have to, uh, you'd have to really, I'd have to stand up for myself and go, that, I mean, the scene with Edith walking, we tried shooting that first thing in the morning, but it was really foggy and you just couldn't see the castle, you know, uh, and, and we needed those shots of her and Bertie when they got together. You couldn't see the castle, it was just foggy. So I just, I just said, look, I, we need to come back and do this at another time. And that's tricky for a production to, to suddenly change around, but luckily we did have something else to go and shoot inside. So I stuck, I stuck by my guns and said, I really want to do, because it, VFX or the CG or nothing was going to help us there. Not, it was just us. And, and we came back out later in the day and the sun was just beautiful. And that's what, that's where you get those shots we ended up doing. Those, those shots ended up in the film because we, because I stuck with my guns and I said, look, this is what I want to do. And, and it worked. Uh, and then a lot of the other times it was just really well planned out and, um, we were we were quite lucky, to be honest, on some occasions. And and you know the planning. Um, I think of when Matthew Good's character arrives unexpectedly. I mean, we're so all thrilled yeah. to see him and thrilled for Lady Mary. I mean, that sequence from car right up the stairs. I mean, how how did you manage that to go through the door and then up those stairs and and all in that one take? It really is. Well, I mean, there is a cut there. The, the shot of him when he bounds when he goes up the stairs is is a special piece of equipment, which is basically like this high, uh, telescopic uh, arm which the camera's on top of, and it follows him all the way around. Yeah. Um, and it's quite tricky because he's running. I didn't say anything to Matthew, but I, I wanted to say, can he just not run so fast? But I said, so I didn't say anything. And, and he bounds up those stairs. Uh, and it's really tricky to follow him. And I'm operating the camera on that. I'm doing, I'm doing that. Now we did it about 11 times because it was just never quite right. But the first. <laughs> He's got to get you Mary, you know, come on, he's been away. The first, take, the first take is the one that they use because uh -oh. at the very top of the stairs, he does this extra little jump. So he just jumped out of frame, but only a little bit. But later in post, I just moved the, I had a bit more at uh, the top of the frame. So I just moved the frame up a teeny bit and it works perfectly. So the first take is what you see in the film. But every take, he, but Matthew just kept bounding up the stairs, running as fast as he could, and it's really tricky to keep up with him on that kind of shot with that piece of equipment. And then but, the, the other scene that the scenes, excuse me, that have a lot of energy to them, but it's much more contained, are the ones downstairs. So in that instance, you're in a, you're at the studio, um, yeah. And then, uh, I mean, the lighting down there is much lower. I mean, everything is so dark. The palette and the colors of the walls. Yeah. I, I, 
and then yet you're very the camera's very intimate like it's it's there with the staff as they're moving about and there's a lot of people in a very small space where they're yeah. challenged with that uh yeah but, but there's always challenges when you've got a lot of people in the scene uh, and there's and um it's a little bit easier downstairs i i i found because it's because it's a, a because it's in on it's all done in the studio so i have a bit more control um uh, I mean, that's the main thing is I have more control down. It's all studio, all downstairs is all studio. So, uh, and also, you know, you don't have to worry so much about the costumes because then they're, they're not all wearing ball gowns. They're wearing kitchen wear and, and servants wear and stuff like that. So, but it's always tricky when you've got lots and lots of people and lots of cast. It seems that all the movies that I do just have massive cast. I mean, I'm used to it because I, lo I love actors. So, I mean, I really, I mean, I just, I just have an I, I, absolute fascination with what actors do. So I love, that's why I love operating the camera. I'm always there with them. And, and, and they, I find n nearly all actors just quite easy to work with because when they get them on set, they're, they're, they're there to do a job and, and most of them are brilliant. And everybody on, on Downton was fantastic. So, but downstairs is, a, is different because I'm allowed to use a little bit of smoke. So it looks different. The walls are a different color. So, um, it's not going to look the same as it does upstairs. And also, the, the downstairs is very uniform. The, the, the wall colours are all the same. They didn't, it, it, which makes total sense. They, they're not going to spend money on painting the downstairs. It's just like, here's a load of green paint, do what you like with it. Um, so so it's, it has this uniform look, so it makes it quite, much easier. And the, light, the lighting is, 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 is slightly different and what actually is very different from upstairs, from upstairs it's much more it has a lot more contrast to it there's more shadows in the um in the downstairs upstairs you didn't need to have those shadows especially in daytime anyway so you you mentioned the cast and i you know i sort of think about maggie smith who you worked on in second the second uh, exotic marigold hotel yeah yeah and we're an awards website what i loved when i was looking up your awards history was that you win an emmy award uh, for Cranford, which has a couple yeah. more dates in it, Judy Dench and Eileen yeah. Atkins. Ma you probably don't know this. Maggie Smith was nominated for an Emmy that same year for something she'd done. A, I was, a, I didn't know that. No. Yeah, I didn't. Um, I didn't. Now I look at that category and, and cinematography in a limited series or telefilm, and you're up against um, episodes of The Pacific, that HBO show that was just, I think, cost more than World War II. So yeah, um, yeah. You know, you win. Now, how how Surprised were you, and obviously pleased, but uh, you didn't expect this, I don't think. I was really surprised. That's why I didn't go because I thought it's. I I, did, I, I thought to myself, I didn't really want to fly five thousand miles to lose an award, um, and I had never really won anything before, so I just didn't think I was going to win. Uh, and also, I was up against not just the Pacific, but I mean, it seemed as though every other show that year was a big show. Right. Uh, and I was I was just up against people that I just couldn't compete with, and 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 the budgets as well. I mean, Cranford was a, quite a big deal for the BBC, but but nothing on the scale of any of those, any of the other nominations. So, you know, it was a big it was a big deal for me to win that. I mean, it was it was it, you know it, it it's um I mean it's a lot, quite a long time ago now, but it did it you know it made such a big difference to me as a person. I, yeah. I don't know if other people recognize it, but to me as a person, you know, whatever happens for the rest of my life, I've got that little, well, it's not so little, actually. I've got that, I've got that thing. That was, that was, and I was very proud of the work I did on Cranford, you know. Well, you, you have to promise us that, you know, and I'm sure you're going to, you're going to be nominated for various things in America for Downton Abbey, the film. You must make the trips and you must, in this instance, come over and uh oh absolutely i i i i will do absolutely and, and it's also it's our it's our winter here and it's going to get cold so i'm definitely planning to come to some <laughs> well I, I love new york in the winter but i'm i'm definitely planning to come i just need somebody to say do you want to come and i'll, I'll be there <laughs> yeah. well listen best of luck and like i said it's quite the the film is such an achievement unto itself and the fact that you've managed to please the different constituencies the hardcore fans and people yeah. are coming to it I mean, it really is uh, something, and I really feel like the uh, the the filming of it, the, your your work is one of the key elements to its success. So, congratulations again. Thank you very much. I appreciate that a lot, Paul. Thank All you. Right.